Hello, I'm Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to focus on DNA. Uh, we're trying to answer three questions. How is DNA built? What does it do? And how is it regulated? In this, pot, this video cast, we're going to focus on the history of the research that went into figuring out this very familiar molecule, the double helix. Okay, experimentation revealed DNA to be the genetic molecule, not protein. And there are three different groups of scientists that are credited with um, figuring out that protein was not the carrier of genetic information. The first scientist, uh, chronologically, was a guy named Frederick Griffith, and he did an experiment with mice and pneumonia bacteria, and he proved that pneumonia bacteria can actually transform their phenotypes by absorbing a factor from the environment, and when they did this, it made them lethal and able to cause pneumonia in mice and kill the mice. Avery, McLeod, and McCarty, a team of scientists working slightly later, um, used Griffith's work and were able to show that the factor Griffith had identified was DNA and not a protein. And finally, Martha Hershey and Chase, I forget his first name, uh, showed that bacteriophages, which are a kind of virus, are able to infect host cells by injecting DNA, not protein, and that the injected DNA was able to reprogram the host cell, allowing for viral replication. And let's look at each of these people in a little bit more detail. Okay, here's a, a diagram of Griffith's experiment. Your book also explains this very well. Fairly straightforward, fairly, fairly simple. I'm not going to take the time in this video cast to go through this step by step. Avery and McLeod, as I said earlier, used Griffith's work to prove or come to the conclusion that Griffith's transforming factor was in fact DNA and not a protein. And finally, Hershey and Chase did an experiment using bacteriophages, some radioactive isotopes, and some bacteria to prove that bacteriophages infect host cells by injecting their DNA, not their protein. Therefore, the genetic material must be DNA and not a protein, pretty much sealing or solving the question that had been raging for close to 50 years. Now, further experimentation revealed that the actual structure of DNA is a double helix, and there are three different groups of scientists that are credited with this part of the question. Uh, Erwin Shargoff noticed in some studies of, of DNA taken from different organisms that there was a pairing rule in DNA samples. Uh, certain, certain purines and certain pyrimidines seem to always occur in the same amounts together. Uh, Rosalind Franklin took some spectacularly precise photos of DNA using x-ray crystallography, and from her pictures, she was able to figure out that DNA was a double-stranded molecule that twisted into a helical shape. And finally, Watson and Crick, who are probably the two most famous scientists in all of biology, were the first to build a model that fit together properly that they named the double helix. So they get the credit for solving the big question of how DNA is actually built. Now, Erwin Shargoff noticed something that we call Shargoff's rule, which is that when you examine DNA samples from different organisms, whatever amount of adenine or whatever percentage of adenine the sample contains, the percentage of thymine will be a very similar amount. So let me show you what I'm talking about there. If you had a sample of DNA, same from a dog, and you separated it into the adenine, the guanine, the thymine, and the cytosine components, let's say if there was 20% adenine, there was always about 20% thymine. And 20 plus 20 is 40. That leaves 60% left over. So that means there'd be 30% of this and 30% of this, okay, which all adds up to 100. So what Shargoff noticed, and he didn't, he didn't pursue this very much, but what he noticed is that the amount of adenine is always equal to the amount of thymine, and the amount of guanine is always equal to the amount of cytosine. We call this Shargoff's rule. And he was trying to find an experimental method or experimental way to identify organisms by their DNA. And it really didn't work, but this weird little quirk of his data um, did um, help Watson and Crick later on to figure out how DNA was built. Rosalind Franklin, uh, probably one of the most famous women in all of biological um, science, uh, used an X-ray camera to take pictures of purified DNA crystals. And this is probably her most famous picture. This is called Photo 51. And it was the clearest photo anybody had ever been able to take of a DNA crystal. And she noticed that, or by, by the shapes of these lines, 
that the DNA molecule was a spiraling molecule and that it was of a constant width. Okay? These lines here told her that the DNA molecule we now know today was a constant width. So if you think of a ladder, it went like this. It didn't go like this. All right, didn't get narrow and thick. Okay, that isn't the way it worked, and that it twisted. All right, so you get this this classic twisting shape that everybody has um, seen a million times. A very important photograph. And finally, Watson and Crick were able to build a model using the purines and pyrimidines A, T, C, and G in the correct organization or the correct orientation, so that the molecule actually made sense chemically. And they won a Nobel Prize for this work. Now, it's important to realize that Watson and Crick didn't build their model just out of the blue. They actually did base their research in collaboration with other people. For example, from Shargoff's, rule, um, Watson, from Shargoff's work, Watson and Crick hypothesized that the nitrogen bases pair up across from each other with A pairing with T and C pairing with G. So somehow or another, the A and the T formed a pair and C and G formed a pair. Okay, and from Franklin's work, Watson and Crick hypothesized the nitrogen bases must be on the inside and point inward, and the sugars and phosphates form a backbone on the outside. Okay, so you see the sugar backbones pointing outward with the bases pointing inward. Okay, they're getting closer to solving the problem of how these nucleotides work together to build a, um, a large DNA molecule. They also deduced from photo 51 that the whole molecule twisted into a helical shape of constant width. All right? And they did give Rosalind Franklin credit in their paper as a footnote for helping them figure this out. Now we'll never know for sure whether or not Rosalind Franklin actually figured out the double helix structure first. Uh, Franklin argued that she never authorized the release of her photo to Watson and Crick. Um, um, Watson and Crick saw photo 51 on um, Maurice Wilkins' desk, and Maurice Wilkins was a colleague of Rosalind Franklin, and he claimed that he did not know that that photo was um, unpublished. He thought it had already been published. Unfortunately, we'll never know for sure because Rosalind Franklin died before the controversy could be settled. So, we reached two conclusions by 1960 that DNA is the molecule cells use to store and transmit genetic information, and that the DNA molecule has a double helix shape with complementary anti-parallel strands. I'll explain what that means in the next video cast. These complementary strands allow, um, allow for a structure that provides a method for replication, which we will examine in detail in another video cast. Now, Watson, Crick, and Wilkins, who was Franklin's um, lab colleague, published their paper in 1953 in the science journal Nature. Uh, Franklin, of course, was mentioned in a footnote. Uh, Rosalind Franklin died of cancer in 1958, uh, probably induced by her exposure to x-rays over her career. Um, the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the double helix went to Watson, Crick, and Wilkins in 1962. Uh, unfortunately, the Nobel Prize cannot be awarded to more than three people, and it can't be awarded to someone who is dead. So. Rosalind Franklin is sometimes referred to as the dark lady of DNA because um, she doesn't get the credit that she definitely deserved. All right, we'll stop there and pick up with DNA replication in the next video cast. Thanks for listening.